Greetings in that wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. This is indeed the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Beloved, we are under a heavy burden in the Western Cape and just even as we go into the Word of God, I would like to just pray, just in this week already I've, I've lost um, two friends, a colleague in the ministry and somebody that I worked with in one of the projects of our, our organization. I'm working for CAPS and we're looking at the at the training and, and just equipping people on, on in the rural communities, farming communities with regards to HIV and AIDS. And one of our peer educators have also passed away and um, my sincere condolences to, to everybody's um, everybody within South Africa and especially the Western Cape that have lost loved ones due to this COVID-19 virus. Let's just pray together. Father, we thank you that we can come before you, Lord, and knowing that you are our God, our Heavenly Father, and that you are concerned about us and that you love us to the point that you've sent your Son to die for us on the cross of Calvary. And Lord, this morning I want to come before you and I want to pray for each and every one, Father. I think of, of Jeffrey that is late and, and, and Lucia, his wife, and their children, that you'll be their abiding portion, I think, portion, Father. I think of Willem, Father, that is also called home. And I pray for his wife and his family in the mighty name of Jesus. I think of um, Pastor Kevin Hendricks. My cousin, Father, and his, his whole household, Yugen and the boys. And I pray for their safekeeping and their protection in the mighty name of Jesus. And everybody that is watching this morning, Father, everybody that is tuned in or will be tuned in through the course of this week, Father, even as they listen to the sermon and, and, and from, from the word go, Father, I want to pray for them as well. I pray for your protection over their lives. I pray, Father, for those who are positive that you will carry them through. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, that they will have a speedy recovery, Father, in Jesus' mighty name. And even as we come to your word this morning, I pray that you will speak to our hearts and minds in Jesus' mighty name with much thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. This morning, I would like to go to 2 Thessalonians 2, and I am doing the, the whole of, of chapter 2. Chapter 2 is basically coming and it talks about the man of lawlessness that points to, to the Antichrist. And I, for a moment, just want to stand still um, in, this, in this text with regards to um, the man of lawlessness and what, what the Word of God is telling us further. Verse 1 reads as follows. Now concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our being gathered together to Him, we ask you, brothers, not to be quickly shaken in mind or alarmed either by a spirit or spoken word or a letter seeming to be from us to the effect that the day of the Lord has come. Let no one deceive you in any way for the day will come will not come unless the rebellion comes first and the man of lawlessness is revealed and the son of destruction who opposes and exalts himself against every so-called God or object of worship so that he takes his seat in the temple of God proclaiming himself to be God. Do you not remember that when I was still with you I told you these things and you know what is restraining him now so that he may be revealed in his time. For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who, who now restrains it will do so until he is out of the way. And then the lawless one will be revealed whom the Lord Jesus will kill with the breath of his mouth and bring to nothing by the appearance of his coming. The coming of the lawless one is by the activity of Satan with all power and false signs and wonders, and with all wicked and deception, for those who are perishing because they refuse to love the truth and so be saved. Therefore, God sends them a strong delusion so that they may believe that what is false, 
in order that all may be condemned who do not believe the truth, but have pleasure in unrighteousness. But we ought to always to give thanks to God for you, brothers, beloved by the Lord, because God chose you as the first fruits of the saved through sanctification by the Spirit and belief in the truth. To this he called you through our gospel so that you may obtain the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. So then, brothers, stand firm and hold to the traditions that you were taught by us, either by our spoken word or by our letters. Now, may our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father, who loved us and gave us eternal comfort and good hope through grace, comfort, you, comfort your hearts and establish them in every good work and word. You know, I remember since very young that there's always been somebody who's been deemed the Antichrist. Almost every five years, there's another name that comes to the, to the fore. And basically, as my memory serves me right, almost every American president has been called the, 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 the Antichrist. I remember, especially when Barack Obama came into, into office, Everybody was, there was, everybody was saying that, ah, this is the Antichrist. And I remember when, when, when Nelson Mandela took office, people were saying, this is the Antichrist. And even Donald Trump has been, has been noted as the Antichrist. And so we go through history and every time there's a conspiracy theory, there's, there's a, an assumption and people um, sort of making guesstimations on who the, the Antichrist is. And so we go and we've seen many lists and we'll probably see much more. But there is nothing funny about it. Because the word of God teaches us when we look at John, 1 John 2, verse 18 to 27, when we look at verse 18, it says, and uh, children, it is the last hour. And as you have heard, the Antichrist is coming. So now many Antichrists have come. You picked up on that one? So now many Antichrists have come. When we go to 1 John 4 and, and, and verse 3, it basically says the same thing. And every spirit that does not confess Jesus to be from God, this is the spirit of Antichrist, which you heard was coming and now is in this world already. So while we are waiting for a specific character to come into power, we, need, we often miss out on the fact that the Antichrist, the Antichrist has been with us since forever already. That we miss out on the fact that the spirit of the Antichrist is with us already. The Bible says that, that Satan is the father of all lies. He's a deceiver, he stands in lies and he's the father of all lies. And so he comes and we seems to often be deceived as we look at the big one, and in the, me in the meantime, like in Afrikaans, Susie Skrif say, that is a klein jakalkis, but die binger de vanil. It is it's the small jackals that, that, that destroys the vineyard. And so I want to bring you to, to attention this morning, church, that we need to understand that we, there will be a big one coming. There will be the big image that would be almost a compilation of all the others that have gone before, but they are all equally from the devil. Paul comes and he says in the first few verses, he says, that we must be careful not to fall and, and become uptight and anxious uh, for, for, for the news that we are getting. That people say he is here and it is happening. He says we need to be aware of the fact there will come a time and we will know when it happens. Verse 3 comes and says, let no one deceive you in any way. 
For the day will not come unless the rebellion comes first and the man of lawlessness, who is the Antichrist, is revealed the son of destruction. It is your responsibility, beloved. The Bible says we need to, we need to not be deceived. Verse 3 says, let no one deceive you. I want to say here this morning, it is our it is our responsibility to make sure that we are not deceived. It is not the, the, the role of the pastor. It is not the role of your, your partner, your prayer partner, whoever it may be. But it is our responsibilities as individuals to study God's word, to understand the truth, so that anything that is counter truth, counter the fact of God's word, we will understand that it's not, and we will not be deceived by it. It is our responsibility not to be deceived. First, first Thessalonians 5, if you can remember, verse 19 to 22 says, Do not quench the spirit, do not despise prophecies. Verse 21 says, But test everything. Don't be deceived. If something, if you're not sure, the Bible says, Test everything. Hold fast that which is good. And the only way that we can do that is to understand, to study, and eat the word of God. We need to, we need to live off from the word of God. We need to meditate on it day and night. The word of God says that thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. My friend, if you do not understand the word of God, you will fall for every road sign. The, the, the spreek woordelike patekens. We will follow every route, every sign on the road if we do not know the directions that we are going. I remember when, when, when the GPS came in, I would basically, everywhere I go, I would put, type in the address and I would let it lead me. And you, you quickly find out that what you've put in and what your intention is in terms of where you want to go and where it takes you is not always the same place. And so it is important that, that we will understand God, so that, we will, that we will guard it in our hearts, that we will meditate on it and, and write it on the tablets of our hearts so that when all else fail, when deception is around, when people throw things at you, that you will know, even though it might look right, it is contrary to the word of God. Let no one deceive you in any way. It is your responsibility to know and understand God's word, to seek God's face and to understand his word and his instruction so that you cannot be deceived. I want to go further and I want to say, beloved, that the man of lawlessness, this coming Wednesday, we will, we will deal with, with, with the man of lawlessness a little bit further. But I want to say that there will come an Antichrist. There will be the Antichrist that will make his appearance. We are living in the last days and we seen with the COVID virus, there's things happening all over the show. The world is in need of a savior. The world is in need of somebody that come as, 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 as a superhero to their rescue. And that's sort of what the Antichrist will come as. He will come as a peacemaker just to turn things wrong side up, just to take over the world and, and the very thing that he came to portray would be the opposite. Let's look at some of his characters. Number one, he claims to be God, as we've just read. He claims to be God and is worshipped. We see, we see in, 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 in verses 3 and 4, it says so, that he's in the temple and he proclaims himself to be God. Revelation 13 verse 6 says that he, he, will, he will blaspheme God, he will speak utterances against God. Number three, he will display miraculous powers. And I want to warn the church of God, my beloved, I want to warn you, don't run after men, so-called men of God, who's performing miracles and all signs and wonders. The thing with the gifts of God, it's irrevocable. God gives it to you, and even when you turn your back on God, it will remain yours. 
Hence people as long time already not with God is no longer serving God hasn't have God's the God intent in their heart and they operate in, in all sorts of gifts and abilities and we follow them. But the thing when we look at 1 Timothy 3 God is looking for men and women that is not gifted but men and women of character. I want to come to you this morning and I want to I want to go as far as to say basically all the gifts of the spirit that we see is not unique to to the church of God only. When we talk about tongues, when 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 the Khoisan, they they chant around the fire and they, they go into a trance, they start speaking in tongues. The same with the with the red Indians and so many others. When it comes to healing, there is healings taking place other than just by the laying on of hands. We see that there's prophecy. We have the Nostradamus of this world and we see prophecies and prophecies coming to fulfillment, but it's not of God. So we need to be so careful that we that we stick to that which is godly, that which is biblical, that which is confined to the word of God. Because we will be deceived. We will run after the gift. But God is not to be found. We need to have a craving. See. 1 John 4. 1 to 6. Verse 3 says. Every spirit that does not confess Jesus. Is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist. Which your heart was coming and now is in this world that you heard was coming and now that is in this world already. So we see that the Antichrist will, will also attempt the, the destruction of Israel. He will, he will gather the armies of the earth to come up against Christ, come up against Israel and there will be warfare. But we also know the word of God says, that his final destination will be the lake of fire. I want to say to the church, even as we speak about the Antichrist, it's not a time to be anxious. It's not the time to, to, to get hot under the collar. But I want to say that we are standing, we are fighting this battle, we are fighting this war from the premises of victory already. We're fighting this knowing that God is on our side. Verse 13 of this chapter, it says, But we ought always to give thanks to God for you, brothers, beloved by the Lord, because God chose you as the first fruits to be saved through the sanctification by the Spirit and believe in the truth. To this He called you through our gospel. Now, I want to quickly just take you back. Verse 2 said, not to be quickly shaken. Verse 15 says, stand firm. Um, verse 2 says, either by the Spirit. Verse 15 says, hold on to the traditions that we have taught you. Um, uh, verse 2 says, or a spoken word, not the word that was spoken of the Spirit by Paul then. And then, then verse 15 says, but by a spoken word that comes from the Spirit. Verse 2 says, or a letter seeming to be from us. Verse 15 says, as we have spoken to you and through the letters that we have seen. So we see that the first few verses is talking about deception. They must not let, let deception overpower them. But then Paul comes and he, and he rounds this chapter off and he says everything that, that verse 2 is saying, that that. They mustn't be shaken. And, and then in verse 15 says, instead stand firm. It, it says, do not be alarmed either by a spirit or a spoken word. And then in verse 16 says, hold on to the traditions and what we thought uh, that you were taught by us. It says, or a spoken word um, that, that comes from somewhere else. And he says, but by the spoken word, hold on to the word that was spoken by us. And by the letters sent by us. And I want to encourage you. Be careful. There are a lot of 
preachers out there that is not preaching the word. There's a lot of celebrity ministers out there. There's a lot of motivational speakers out there, but they don't hold to the truth. Beloved, it is only by the truth of God that we'll be able to discern between right and wrong. It is by the truth of God that we will stand in victory. It is by the truth of God that we will withstand the deception of the enemy. I want to say that you are more than conquerors, but your conquering power is found in your stepping into, stepping into, standing under the covering of God's word. Hallelujah. Verse 13 to 17, it says, if I have to sum it up, sum it up. We can stand firm because. In verse 13, because we believe in the truth. We can stand firm. Verse 14 says, because we, we, we are called by the gospel of Christ Jesus. We can stand firm because we hold to the traditions that were taught to, by us through, through, the, through the word of, of God. We, we, can, we can hold, we can stand firm because we have heard the spoken word, the rhema word. We have read the letters, the, the, the logos word. And then verse 15, verse 16 comes and says, Now, may our Lord Jesus Christ and our Father who loved us and gave us eternal comfort and good hope through grace. Comfort your hearts and establish them in every good work and word. I want to encourage you, beloved. The church of God has never been a monument. We speak life. We proclaim life. We do good. Matthew 25, my favorite. I was hungry. And, and, and you fed me, I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. We, we reach out to, to the poor, to the indigent, we, we reach out to the alien, we reach out to those who are sick and in prison. We need to do. And the Bible says in verse 17, comfort your hearts and establish them in every good work and word. May the Lord bless you. Let us, as we come together on Wednesday night at, at half past seven, and we look a little bit deeper into the Antichrist. Let us know that there is already Antichrists, plural, in our midst. Anybody, any religion, any institution that does not confess Jesus as Lord and Savior, that doesn't confess him as God, is Antichrist. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Father, I come before you and I thank you that we can call you God. Thank you, Jesus, that you came from heaven above to show us the way that you came to die on the cross so that we can be set free. And this morning we realize that the first Adam has, has, has ruined everything, but the final Adam, Christ Jesus, has come so that we can have life and life to the full. And here we read of the Antichrist, not only that he's anti, but he also wants to mimic the real you. So we want to come up against this deceptive spirit in the mighty name of Jesus, that we will know that our hope is found in Christ alone. Thank you for the redemptive work on the cross of Calvary, O oh God. And I pray even right now as we, as we close this time in prayer, that you will bless us and undertake for us in the mighty name of Jesus with much thanksgiving. Amen. I just want to say to everybody, um, from time to time, half past one during the week, we, we sporadically, we will have a 10 minute, 15 minute time of prayer. And then Wednesday night at half past seven, we will, we will go into either prayer and Bible study or just prayer or just Bible study as, as the spirit of the Lord leads. May the Lord bless you. Amen. Have a lovely week.